All right, it's 7.03. I'm anxious to get started. You're anxious to get started. If people come in, then they'll come in and they'll have to just catch up. So I'm Mike Bloom uh, with the Studio for Teaching and Learning Innovation. I'm joined here. Um, let me make sure we're recording now. Um, let me just see if it's recording. Uh, yep, it's, it's recording. Looks like it. Not that I have anything great to say, but you know, I'm sure that Roy and Troy are going to have interesting things to say. Troy Davis is here from the uh, Reader Media Center. And um, Roy and Troy, I told them to kind of just chill out today. If they have stuff to add, they'll be adding it. Um, but they're going to be um, much more involved in the second to two sessions, but they're going to be helping out and talking about their perspectives as well. And I invited them to jump in whenever they're ready. Um, but so we've got three sessions in store for everyone, and I'm very excited about this new format that we have. For people who visited us last year, um, you know, it was very technical, and it, I thought it was really a great start, but I felt like, and other people have told me that they, there wasn't enough kind of hands-on stuff, and um, we're going to bring you some hands-on stuff today. You're going to get involved. You're going to actually get talking about what you want to accomplish. Um, and so session one is going to be bring yourself. We're going to talk about personality, enthusiasm, why you're doing this, um, what your goals are, and you're going to be talking uh, to each other, and you're going to be sharing why you want to do this, um, why you, what kinds of uh, recordings you want to make, what kind of class. If you were going to teach a class on something, I know not everyone is teaching a class. Some people are here, uh, just here for the video editing. Some people are here for the jokes, as Ali mentioned, you know, so... Um, so you're going to bring yourself today. We're going to talk about stories and bringing your knowledge. We're going to talk about pacing, um, making sure that you um, provide the, the, um, the rhythm and the pacing for your class and to kind of give students that space to, um, to learn from you. Now, remember, when you're recording videos, when you are doing um, your uh, instructor presence and student engagement with your videos. Sure, you want to teach them things, but they can learn from a book. They can learn from readings. They can learn from videos um, that you might share with them. Um, but you're bringing something to them that they don't necessarily get from any place else when you're doing these video tutorials for them, when you're doing these video lessons for them. So today we're going to emphasize kind of bringing yourself. Um, Tomorrow, next Thursday, we're going to be talking about how to bring your stuff. So how do you make your audio look, uh, sound good? How do you make your video look good? Um, what do you do about lighting? What do you do about the fancy stuff? So you notice today, I don't have any fancy stuff. Um, I've got no green screen. I've got a green screen on a little hook here, and I've got a video to show you how you'll get that green screen on a little hook. Super easy. Costs you 20 bucks. Put it in any room in your house. But that's not for today. For today, today is just about us. Um, so we're going to be talking about that fancy stuff next time. And then in the third session, we're going to be putting it all together, right? So we're going to talk about editing, what we've got, and we're going to be talking about how we share these things. So before we get started, how does that sound? Any questions, anything that you want to kind of get off your chest before we jump into it? So I didn't wait exactly 20 seconds, but I'm, I think that we're all set to go. So if that sounds good to everyone, let's get started. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to jump right in and we're going to start exploring uh, our own reasons for being here. And we're going to talk about what the goals of your course or your video series are going to be, right? Because you need to have goals. Um, and even if you don't have anything in mind, if you don't have a class that you're interested in doing, um, it's really important to um, think about some, some sort of project that you might have in mind. So what do you want to communicate over the course of the semester, right? So for me, let's say I love cooking. I want to have a course. I want to have a, a, a vlog or a course or a podcast on cooking, and I want to teach people how to cook, right? So what do I want to have in an introductory video? I love this topic because, right? So why do I love cooking? I love, this, I love cooking because whatever that might be. Or this topic is important because cooking is really important because it connects people, right? So I want to share that with the people that I'm actually teaching. Um, I got interested in this topic when, 
right? So these are personal stories. These are connections that you're making. Um, so I got interested in cooking when, and I might start my podcast like this. I might start my video series like this. When I really got, and here, oh, I've turned to the camera. I'm looking at the camera and I'm telling you my story, right? So I know that my audience is over here. I'm not gonna look over there. I'm gonna look at the camera, but I know my audience is here. So I'm gonna say, I really got interested in cooking when I was 11 years old. And most people, when they started cooking when they were 11 years old, they learned from their grandmother or their mother. Well, the same thing kind of happened with me. I learned from my grandmother, but I learned because my grandmother was such a bad cook. And it was very difficult for the whole family. We hated eating the food that she would make. It's terrible to say, but you know, she grew up poor. She didn't have a lot to work with. And she raised a family in Cuba and they ate rice and beans basically every single day. Well, for an 11 year old kid living in New York, it's very difficult for me to be eating the kind of repetitive food that I ate. So I hate to say it, I was a little bit of a pain in the neck. Um, I would demand, can I cook one day a week? And I would cook when I started to be 11 years old, I started to cook meals. My favorite meal to cook was Hawaiian chicken. And maybe later in the course, I'm gonna teach you my old fashioned Hawaiian chicken that I used to make. Um, but that's the reason I love cooking. And that's the reason I wanna bring my love of cooking to you. Okay. So that may not be the best story, but it's, an, it's a story. And now you're connected in some way to me, right? And you're connected to my story and you're interested in what I've got to say. So what I'm gonna do is I want you all to think about if I were doing, is there, first, let's have a show of hands. Who has a very specific reason why they're here and they know a course that they wanna create their videos for? So there are a few people who do. Um, and so there are some people who may, there are some people who may not, um, but there's something that you're passionate about. There's something you're interested in. There's something that you wanna teach people. So I want you now take a few minutes. And if you don't have a specific idea now about what you wanna do, I want you to think about what the goals for a course or a video series would be for you. And I want you to just jot that down and what you're interested in communicating. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn everyone loose into a breakout room in groups of three. And I want you um, to tell that story. I want you to tell the story to the two people who you're with, and I want you to take turns. And we'll take probably only about two minutes each and think about it in terms of this. You don't need to tell a story like I told, but think about some introductory language that might get you started into this. So I love this topic because, or, this topic is important because, or I got interested in this topic when, or here's an interesting story about the topic that I think might connect you to the material, right? So really great prompts for an introductory video that you might be doing in a course, right? And remember why we're doing this. Remember why we are producing these videos. It's to connect to our students. It's to um, have the, the instructor be present in the moment. And it's about um, engaging with the students and make sure that they um, feel a connection to you. So just take a few minutes, jot that down. And when you go into the breakout rooms, it's really, it'd probably be nicer if the people who don't have their videos on right now, um, if you turn your videos on just so people, the, the two people who I send you into the breakout room with, um, we'll be able to, to see you and, and make eye contact with you. Because one of the reasons that we're going into the breakout rooms is very important. When, you're do, when we're doing these video uh, productions, when, we're, when we are talking about instructor presence and student engagement, one of the really important things is the concept of an audience, right? And very often it's, it's very difficult for us if we are trying to teach a class and we're trying to make a video, um, to not know who our audience is, not to be talking to an audience. So we're going to be scaffolding um, our class today, and we're just going to have a little bit of an audience right now. And you're going to talk about um, the main overarching goals of a course that you might want to teach. So I told you a course that I might want to teach um, on cooking. I might teach a course on video production. I might teach a course on knitting. I might teach a course on pet care, whatever that is. Um, and I'll get ready and I'll sort of send everyone to uh, your breakout rooms right now. So let me start the breakout rooms. I'm gonna assign them automatically. 
and I've got, we're going to say three to four participants per room so that we have enough people to kind of work with. And um, I think everyone's just going to disappear into their room. So does everyone know, <coughs> everyone know what you're going to be doing? Basically, you're going to give the cocktail party um, address of the course or the video series that you're passionate about that you really want to teach. And you're going to introduce it in one of these following four ways, or you can think of another different way that you want to introduce it that's going to explain things to, to them. But the main thing is, remember, it's all about instructor presence. It's all about being there in the moment. It's all about engaging with the students and engaging with the audience. So um, be excited, be interested, show your personality. Oh, it's nice to see everyone is uh, making their way back. So was that difficult? Was it hard to do? Was it hard to uh, kind of express yourself and um, what you're hoping to accomplish? It might have been hard for some people, easier for other people. Um, so you heard a lot of stories. You, you told your own story and uh, people, and you heard two other people's stories. Um, what were some of the effective communication elements that your colleagues used when they were explaining their topics? There was an element of storytelling that I thought was really interesting uh, in, a, in a couple of the, you know, suggest, uh, what the plans for courses or, or passions. Um, so yeah, story, stories were great. Mm -hmm. The other people like, seem to be I wanted to say, oh. Tony, go ahead. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, I was in the group with Mona and she teach Arabic. And I loved the fact how she was telling a story as well, how she would like to make it more simplified um, for the students to communicate by talking about their day as opposed to actually, I guess, teaching a lesson about it, but to communicate on something in common like shoes or how your day started or what you had for breakfast. Yeah, and that's another great thing that, you know, not only can you use these, um, these tips to help your own presentations and your own uh, video production, um, but students can really benefit from, benefit from these ideas too when they're doing their own presentations as well. Um, I think, uh, Fred, you, had, you were going to make a comment? Yeah, I was just going to say that, um, you know, that in, in our chat room, everybody else seemed much more at ease in front of the camera than I am after all of this. I, I am sick of seeing myself on camera. It makes me less want to, to do less with the video. But maybe I'm just a minority on that. I just, I'm not used to watch, seeing myself, looking at myself much every day. And this right. last year, yeah, we've seen, and he, I noticed that with you, Mike, when you were you're looking at your screen and, and then you turned to the camera and you did your story. And it was completely natural. You're looking in the right place. Things like that. After, uh, you know, I've been teaching face-to-face. -face. I haven't done a lot, but I've done a ton of Zooming for meetings and stuff. And I am I still am not sure these basic things about where to look, that kind of stuff. But other people seem to know. Right, yeah. And um, that's that's so important to, to have a concept of audience and to know, you know, so like I'm talking to you and I'm looking like I'm talking to you over there and that's fine. Um, but then every once in a while, when I want to make that dramatic point, I'm still looking, I'm still thinking about you, Fred, and I'm now going to talk and I'm, I'm talking specifically to you. And I know that I'm talking to you, even though I can't see you. Um, and it's much more effective, right? When I'm looking at the camera and, and you feel it, you feel um, that immediate connection between us, even if I'm not looking at you over there on my screen, but I'm thinking about you. And it is difficult. It's a hard thing. It's a hard adjustment to make. And that's practice. A lot of that is practice. And a lot of that is is knowing what your goals are. And if I know what my goals are, if I know my goal is to connect with the students, um, it makes it easier for me to, to make that turn and to look at the camera. Uh, David, I think you were gonna yeah, say something. Um, yes, I just, it, I enjoyed the, just the personal aspect of typically when you're talking about a course, you're, you're focused as at least as a student, you're focused on the content of the course. And I found it very interesting to talk with Audrey and Eric that, you know, the personal aspect that they're an instructor teaching this course and, you know, where they're coming from and all the work that goes into it. So I also just wanted to mention 
I read a fast, I saw a fascinating article this morning. Um, I'm gonna share it in the chat about why it, it's a, it was about Zoom fatigue. And there was a study that just came out you know, from a psychologist explaining why that is. And as the previous speaker said, it's like, you know, usually we don't walk around with a mirror in front of our face all day long looking at ourselves. And it's, it, it's from a sort of an evolutionary perspective. It's very tiring because it's just not in our ken of experience. And, and also, you know, having all of these different large faces, it, it's sort of this flight or fight response that brings up these atavistic responses. So I'll share it in the chat. Yeah, that's great. And that actually, a lot of that has to do with how we have our Zoom session set up. I now always have my Zoom session set up for gallery view because I don't want to see somebody like pop, pop, pop and appear. So I don't know how everyone else has theirs set up, but I like mine in gallery view. And to get at not wanting to see yourself, um, your face all the time, I totally get that. There's no reason why you have to look at yourself on Zoom if you're self-conscious about that, because you can click on the little three dots next to your video and say, hide self view. And now all of a sudden you're no longer there and you feel, because it's weird, right? If I'm talking and I think I'm talking to you, but I'm also talking to myself and I can see myself, I can see my lips moving, which is really weird, but I can hide my self view while I'm still looking at everyone else and they can see me. Um, and that makes that self-consciousness a lot better. So yeah, absolutely. That could be really fatiguing um, to always be like paying attention. How am I looking? What am I doing? You know, am I, am I nodding correctly? Um, so I wish, to hide- I wish I had known that <laughs> How do I get it back? How do I get it back? Um, how do you get back self-view? Um, let me see. Let me hide my self-view. I and love that though. That's fabulous. So you go to view at the top right, and then you can say show self-view. And then you go back to showing your self-view. Oh, this is great. Yeah, so it's a lot more normal. It really helps for the zoom fatigue to be able to not have to look at yourself all the time. That's right. True. So oh, just a little stupid tip. That this you course is use. already worth it right there. <laughs> Perfect. You made you made your money. You made your investment back. Um, anyone else? Anyone else have um, any comments about that? Yeah, yeah. We, I was I was in the group with Logan and Mona as well, and one topic that came up um, repeatedly was kind of the idea of what does our audience want to hear? What you know message would resonate most with them? How can we? how can we say something that will then engage them in the conversation and trying to think about how we can integrate both stories to make that personal connection, but also relevant, but also have it be applicable to, you know, the course content that we're the, the real message we're trying to get across. It's not easy. No, absolutely not. And actually there was a really um, great um, workshop with Paul Heidemann uh, last week. And Paul gave some really great advice that I'm going to share with you now. What he said is, do something for you. Do something that you enjoy, that you think is fun, that you think is funny. Because to always focus on what you think the other person wants to hear is exhausting. And it doesn't come across exactly right. But now, I told that story about my grandmother and what a terrible cook she is. I really don't care uh, how you feel about that. I wanted to tell that story because it was meaningful to me. And that comes across, that passion, that interest, that enthusiasm, um, even if somebody doesn't care about what it is that you're saying, right? They know you care. And that's important. But that's a great point, Amy. Anyone else? Okay, well, let me share my screen back. And yeah, these were really great. I really enjoyed listening to your comments in that. Um, so we've got some examples here. So what we're gonna do now is you all shared your stories, you all kind of loosened up, you got your, you know, whatever, we, we, we did our mountain pose and we did our stretching. Now we're gonna do some downward dog. Um, but before that, we're gonna see some other people and how they do their things. Um, so let me go ahead and make sure that I've got my share sound and my uh, optimized for video clip before we see this. 
And we got four examples of uh, instructors or, or people who, who teach in some way at William and Mary, and they're giving their kind of spiel. They're doing their thing. And we're going to, and as I said, these are not necessarily exemplars for good or for bad, but they're things that we can watch and we can learn from them and we can see, oh, I could see myself doing that, or, oh, I can't do that. Uh, there's one especially that I can't do, and I'm sure you'll be able to guess which one it is. Well, there's two that I can't do, but they're for two completely different reasons. So I'm Jawan Johnson. I'm a social historian here. Um, no, let's go ahead. So I'm Jawan Johnson. I'm a social historian who focuses on the study of African-American history and culture. Um, presently, I'm a postdoctoral fellow here at William & Mary. Hello, I'm Dr. Jawan Johnson, and I'd like to welcome you to African American Studies Research Methods and Resources, a course that I'm excited about this um, teaching this semester and that I think you'll gain a lot from if you have an interest in research. Um, in this course, we have five modules. The modules are sharing authority, where we work in tandem with community in the in a community-centered research process. Number two, uh, we are going to uh, learn a bit about the field of Africana studies, African American studies, and most specifically, how do these, how what what are the distinctions of this particular research field? Um, next, we're going to go into the archives. We're going to talk about um, the archives as a particular place and space, and the stories embedded in places outside of repositories. And number four. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let me go back. <clears throat> Number four, we're going to do African American history, uh, African American genealogy, um, in order to really understand the life of African American people. It's important to delve into family history, which then leads us to place. We're going to do field research, and we're going to actually go to some places. Um, hopefully, by that time, we'll be able to go to uh, to physical spaces and not just virtual ones. Um, but we're going to have a wonderful opportunity of applying great research methods. Um, okay, I love this one um, for a lot of different reasons. Um, what did you think of it? Can I ask a really stupid basic question that I should yeah. know right now? Where is he looking when he's reading? That's a great question. He is looking at the camera. Okay, so what's he reading from? Roy, you did, you did the filming on he, this. He had he... some notes. He had some notes and I was trying to... Um, I was trying to get him to not read from the notes. Uh, and when he eventually did, it was, it was very natural. And um, his passion about history just came, came through. So um, for that, I, for this clip, I just want to show, like, you can use your mistakes. And, and it just kind of puts people at ease, I think. To, uh, you know, with the flubs, the bloopers that he went through. Absolutely, I, as it makes him more human. Um, nobody said, oh boy, he doesn't know what he's talking about when he made that mistake. I laughed, I laughed not at him, I laughed with him. I thought, you know, that is really charming because um, it's wonderful. And Fred, an, another point about where he's looking. Um, so here's not a pro this is not a problem. You know, I say, hey, it's Mike, and today we're going to be talking about video editing, or we're going to be talking about video production. And the thing that you're going to be learning today, and so I know, I know kind of what I'm going to be saying. Um, I could make a mistake. It doesn't matter if I make a mistake, but now I have notes that I need to read from, and I don't want to make it look like I'm reading from the notes. I have a, a minute-long introduction, and I've got six minutes of notes that I want to read from. So I do my minute-long introduction when I'm looking at the screen, and we're going to be talking about the possibility next time of using um, a teleprompter right on your screen there, which you can definitely do, um, but it's gonna sound stilted. What might be better is I'm talking to you and I'm on screen for the first minute. And now very naturally, I'm gonna look down, I'm gonna have a slideshow going and I'm gonna read my notes in a very natural way. Um, and you're not gonna see it because I'm not gonna be on video at this point. I'm gonna take myself off of the video if I wanna do something like that, right? But I've made that connection at the beginning 
by telling a story, by saying why this is really interesting to me. You know, this period in Russian history is really fascinating. I love it because I was actually standing on this spot where this happened and I could really feel it. So, and, and now you've connected with the students. You don't have to do that the whole 10 minutes that you're do, giving your, your lecture, right? So, but that's a great question, Fred. And um, yeah, don't feel, don't feel the need to, to memorize everything. Don't feel the need to always be staring down the audience. You don't need to do that either. Other comments about that last one? Eric, you're on mute. I like saying that. It struck me that his reaction when he made that flub, it, um, that's very common when you're talking to someone face to face, people do that all the time. And I think it's, um, as soon as you feel that you're on camera and have to be perfect in your diction and flow without any interruptions or repeats is I, to me somewhere you don't really want to go. And he recovered from it beautifully, but it, it did sort of show me that he felt like he was reading a script rather than just talking. Yeah. And I know that that's, I mean, sometimes you do have to sort of read a script, but um, yeah. Right. Like, am, I looking, am I looking at the camera right now? Do I look like I'm speaking directly to you? It looks like you're speaking directly to me. Okay, I'm not. I'm looking directly above the camera. And, and so that can work, thing, yeah. The simplest thing you can do if you, if you have a keyword outline is just to put it adjacent to or slightly above it. If you have two monitors, you can just put the second monitor up, up above the first one. Because um, actually, I'm looking at a lovely scribbled pencil drawing that my daughter made. And if you have a one-minute intro, you don't want to memorize it. Um, what you do is if you write it out so that you know how you want think, to phrase things and practice from that a few times, you can then reduce it to a key word outline and those phrases will come back to you. And so you'll sound like you're speaking extemporaneously, but in fact, it's polished because you practiced it a few times. And, and Eric is a shill. Why do, you go to the, why do you go to the biology department for public speaking advice? Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you so much for that vote of confidence. <laughs> Wait, what was that about, Eric? I was about to, to say that you're, you're my show from the uh, speech department. Well, yeah, but, but you call it Paul Heidman for all of your advice about it because he wrote one article about giving one-minute presentations. Oh, no, no, because he, he was just the one who did his last thing last, uh, oh, okay. last no, week. He, he got a publication out of an assignment he gives his biology students oh, for giving no, a no, speech. No. And, uh, yeah, he's now, he's now the chairman of the... Um, Department mm. of Communication here at William and Mary. Oh, I wasn't aware of that. No, he just gave no, a, he just I'm gave kidding. a talk. He's last in the biology week. department, but um, nobody is. nobody even knows we exist. So he, he's the go to <laughs> guy for speeches. Oh, that's too bad. No, but I was gonna I was gonna give a, a shout out to you, Eric, for being you know uh, the the speech person, and you, that, that's a great. Don't piece drag of me into this. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Um, so yeah, that was, that, that's a, that's a great example of, I think a way that you can, and the other thing that I think I want to point out is the more comfortable you are with video editing, the more comfortable you are making mistakes in front of the camera, because I say to myself, oh, I can take multiple passes at this. I don't have to get it perfect. And I do that all the time. And so I'll make multiple passes. And the other thing is practice, practice, practice. You're not going to get it right the first time. You're not going to get it right the second time. But you'll become easy. You'll, you'll become easy with um, talking to a camera and with talking in front of, you know, a group of people, um, knowing that there's a camera kind of as your intermediary. Um, so that really is is an important thing. So let me share my screen again, and we've got another one that we can look at. And we'll probably just take a look at one more because this is this one. Because I want to get you guys um, back on your horses and we're going to do some more um, production. So this is one of my favorite ones. Oh, wait, I got to uh, make sure that you can hear this. Oh, yeah, you can. Okay, good.
Do not attempt to adjust your computer screen because we are in there. Hey folks, my name is Steve Prince and I'm the Director of Engagement at the Muscarelli Museum at William and Mary. Hey, Brother Roy. Hey, how you doing, man? All right, all right, all right. I'm looking good, man. Looking good, man. I tell you, you got a good looking bunch up in there. Man, y'all look good. So good to see you all today. And so good here to share with you just a little bit of information and so forth. You know, as I said, I'm the director of engagement at the Muscarelli Museum. And when the pandemic hit, it just put my whole job up on the side of his head in terms of I was normally going out and engaging with people out in the community and I had to stop all that. So I developed this thing called Muscarelli in the House Virtual Art Lessons. And these art lessons I basically share with you every week through YouTube. And so what I had to do, I had to create like some best practices and I created seven best practices for myself. And I'm gonna list them all for you. Number one, I wanted to make sure that I was in a well-lit space, that everyone can see me and, and see me with clarity, that I wouldn't sit there and off in the dark and so forth. Again, I'm trying to promote the light and create the... All right, well, you get the idea with uh, that. It's a spectacular video, and you'll be able to see this whole thing. I'll share my slides with you afterwards. I really recommend that you, you watch his whole video. It's got, he's got some great tips in there, um, but you can't help but smile when you look at that. His enthusiasm is just absolutely infectious, and he loves what he does. Um, I'm not saying that that's your personality, but you see his personality when he's doing that. Um, any comments about... That's the one I, I don't think I could ever do. He's just amazing. That's There's another exactly, one, but it's in Spanish. That's almost exactly how mine are. <laughs> <laughs> I could see that happening, Fred. Anybody else? Any comments? Any feedback on that? So uh, I think it's just an extraordinary rapport, isn't it? I mean, he's doing all the things that I'm worried about doing but doing them as part of what he's doing. So he's looking aside and he's talking to people and with no self-consciousness at all. You but know. you have, you have self-consciousness, right? Yeah. Bring that, bring yeah. that. It's your personality. Yeah. But it's just that, that sort of um, ease in front of the camera, which is uh, just, uh, I think it's a little unusual to see it easy in front of the camera, to be honest. Right. Yeah. He, well, he's an, he's an unusual, extraordinary case. And he is, you know, director of engagement. So you'd expect him to be um, a little bit more engaging than your average person. All right. I'm going to share my screen with you again. We're going to continue on our way. Um, yeah, this one is really great. This one is um, in Spanish. And let me just play a minute of this one, uh, just so you can kind of see it. Hola, mi nombre es Mateo Cantarello y en este video les explicaré cómo, cuándo y por qué organizar una búsqueda del tesoro en su clase. En este video nos enfocaremos en una búsqueda del tesoro en una clase de español de nivel intermedio cuyo tema es el subjuntivo en cláusulas adjetivas o adjetivales. So, what I love about this one is how animated he is and how he really uses pacing to make sure that you can sort of see everything that he's doing and, and so that uh, you can be engaged with him. He's got a big smile on his face. He's, he's very charming in his delivery, um, but it works for him. It's his personality. So we saw three completely different personalities, um, but they're all sharing in very, very quickly um, who they are, what they're about, and um, how students can engage with them, right? And, you know, we're gonna try that today. We're gonna do that just in a little bit, actually, actually coming up very soon. So let me share my screen with you again. So I'm Jawan Johnson. I'm Oops, a stop Jawan, sorry. So now they're all playing. Please, uh, <laughs> Oops. Okay. Here we go. So here's explorer number two. Now we talked about the goals of your, of your actual course or your uh, long-term podcast or whatever it was, whatever you were teaching, um, generally speaking. So 
one thing that you want to think about is what am I communicating today, right? What's my goal for communication today? And again, think about some introductory language. So I love today's topic because it's really great to start um, with a little passion, a little, why am, I, why am I teaching this? Why are you listening to this, right? Why, are you, why am I not just assigning you a chapter in a book to read? There's got to be something, some reason why I'm actually here and why you're actually listening to me. Um, or today's topic is important because X, Y, Z. Or here's why I'm interested in today's topic. I got interested when this thing happened. Um, so if it were me, I would say an interesting story about today's topic is, so here's me. I've got my cooking class. I'm teaching everyone about cooking. Today, we're talking about mayonnaise. Now, wait a minute. Don't turn your TV sets off. Mayonnaise is amazing. I used to just buy mayonnaise all the time, but I was traveling in Spain. We were in Granada. It was New Year's Eve, actually, and I needed mayonnaise for something, and we had forgotten to buy mayonnaise. So what was I going to do? I looked up on the internet, seeing how I could make a substitution for mayonnaise, and in my desperation, I searched make mayonnaise. And you needed olive oil, you needed eggs, you needed some sort of acid, we had a lemon, and I had salt. So I'm like, okay, I can do this. I can make this. It didn't come out great. I'm not going to lie to you. But the seeds of my efforts were there. I said, okay, I can do this. I can make it better. And I made it better. And I'm going to teach you how I like to make mayonnaise. Super simple. So, And not only is it super simple, it's so delicious. You're never going to want to buy mayonnaise again. You're going to want to make it all the time. Okay. So little bit of an introduction, a little bit of a story. And now I go into teaching you how to make mayonnaise. Much more interesting than if I started on, today we're going to make mayonnaise. Here's how you make the mayonnaise, right? You don't give a shit about making mayonnaise. But now all of a sudden, you want to know what my mayonnaise recipe is. Okay? Um, and now you've engaged the students, and now the students want to continue watching what it is that you've got to teach them. So we're going to try something really interesting. I have this really cool idea, and in the next... We've got about 10 minutes left. So here's what I'm planning on doing. I'm planning on sending everyone to their own breakout rooms, or we don't even have to do it in breakout rooms. You guys can do it on your own if you want to do that. Um, but we'll try it in a breakout room, and then we'll try to call everyone back. If it doesn't work, you can record it later. But um, we've got this uh, URL, flipgrid.com slash bloom9640. I'm going to put it in the chat so that you have access to it. Um, Actually, I'm going to put it in the chat, but I'll, I'll send you all to your individual breakout rooms and you'll go to this Flipgrid and what's going to happen? I'll show you what's going to happen. You're going to end up in Flipgrid and you're going to end up in this today's topic, right? So now I'm going to click on it and I'm going to actually record a response. And when I record a response, who here has used Flipgrid? Okay, you guys are going to be Flipgrid converts when you see how cool and easy this is. So you're going to record a response. I'm going to say record a response. And it actually works while you're in your Zoom session, which is amazing. Um, and now here it is. And then I'm just going to record myself. And I'll say, OK, record. And it'll do, give me a countdown. And I'll say, hey, this is Mike. And in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to make mayonnaise. And the really cool thing about this mayonnaise, it's a, it's a recipe that I actually got interested in when I was traveling in Spain and we were in Granada and blah, 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 right? So what are we doing here? I'm gonna stop that. And I'm gonna say next. And I'll say, hey, this is Mike. Here I am. And in this, this tutorial, I'm gonna teach, I'm gonna say next again. I'm gonna display my, I'm gonna put in my name here, Michael Bloom, so everyone knows who I am. And I'm gonna say submit. It's going to upload my video. I'm going to say done. And look, here it is. And then all of us can watch it. So what we're going to do this week is we're going to record you on the base level. This is bring yourself, right? So I want you to tell a story. I want you to be interested. I want you to um, think about what it is that you're teaching us today. And I want you to record it. A couple of minutes. That's all you need to do. And then we're going to take a look at it. And we're going to talk about it in the next session. And the next session, we're gonna talk about how you can improve it from very, from 
as many different angles as possible. How you can have better lighting, how you can have better audio, how you can have better um, camera placement, how you can um, you know, bring more passion to it, how you can maybe look at the screen better. And we're going to talk about it in terms of you know, what's the rubric? What's, what, what kinds of things are we looking at when we're trying to tell our stories? So I'm going to go ahead and grab today's topic. And let me copy the... Um, why, how can, why can't I copy the topic? Join code, I don't want that. Should be on, oh, share, duh. Here it is, and I'm just gonna copy it. And let's see, you'll have to log in with your William & Mary account and make an account. So I'll give you about five minutes to, to make an account if you don't have one. If you can't make one, um, let me know, and then I'll send everyone to the breakout rooms. So I'm gonna put this in the chat, and then you can go ahead and I'll send you to your own private rooms and you can make your recordings. So there's the Flipgrid link. If you're afraid and you don't wanna do it right now, you can do it later. And then what we'll do is um, we'll review these for next time and we'll sort of say what we liked, what, what our exemplars, what we kind of want to emulate, um, what we might want more of, what we might want less of. And that's what we'll do next time. We'll get together, we'll talk about um, basics of improving your video. Um, audio is the most important thing. Um, yeah, Fred. Uh, do we join with Google or join with Microsoft? Join with Microsoft? Um, if you've got a, uh, a William & Mary Google account, you can join with that. Otherwise, uh, go ahead and you can join with Microsoft. Thank you. Oh, right. Flipgrid does not work in Safari, so you need to open it up in Chrome. You shouldn't be using Safari anyway. I hate to say that. I know there are people who love Safari. Troy's shaking his head no, he likes Safari. <laughs> would, th would this be in the same place as Sway and those kind of things, Office 365? No, it's not. It's its own, it's its own thing. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. and if people have trouble getting to Flipgrid, um, shoot me an email and I'll make sure that uh, you get into it tomorrow and we'll just, and you can do your recording tomorrow. And, and everyone can, so where can you watch your videos? I'm going to share the um, slideshow with you after this, and then you'll be able to watch the videos. Um, so here we go. I'm going to send everyone to your breakout rooms and we'll go for about five minutes and um, you'll do your recordings and I'll see you in, I'll, I'll, I'll call everyone back who can make it back around 8.02 for a farewell and to talk about what we're gonna do next time. If you can't, then I'll just see you next time. But um, I hope you'll be able to stay and I'm gonna go ahead and create those breakout rooms for everyone. It's definitely a very different experience from a classroom. You, mm. uh, we just depend so much on personal charisma <laughs> and then suddenly you have to be on a screen. <laughs> you have personal charisma? What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm saying it's so much easier in the classroom than on Zoom. <laughs> it is. It is. It takes practice. It takes, it yeah. takes practice. And it takes, um, you know, shifting your perspective on, on who your audience is and, and where your audience is. And now, one, one thing that I wanted to point out, though, uh, let's see if, if people are actually, like, back. I'm going to go to gallery view again. Um, I'm going to ask everyone to come back because I, I really do want to talk about um, the difference between when we were talking to each other and when we were talking to the monitor, because I think that's a really important distinction to make. And Mona, you're exactly right. Um, it's not natural and it does take practice. And, but as you know, as educators, everything takes practice. And to be comfortable talking to a monitor, talking to a screen, 
I mean, think about how comfortable you were the first time you walked into a classroom to teach to a group of students. Probably not very comfortable. I know I wasn't very comfortable. The first time I taught in front of a group of students, I was at, um, I was teaching uh, English at Thomas Nelson Community College. And I was really shy and my heart used to pound like crazy because I was very, very stressed out. So I had this technique where I would run up and down the stairs so that my heart would be going from exhaustion rather than from just white knuckled fear of being in the classroom. And then my, I wouldn't know the difference, but I walked into that first class and I'm like, is this English 101? And they say, yeah, take a seat. And they were not happy when the seat I took was in the front of the class. So, cause I, I was younger than most of the students there at the time. Um, so yeah, but it's not, it's not natural to talk in front of a classroom. At least it wasn't for me. Um, just the same way that it's not natural um, to, to talk to, a, to a, a, a video camera when there's no one else in the room. Um, so let's think though about the differences that we had when we had that audience in the first breakout session and we were all alone in that second breakout session. And I did that on purpose so that you could really see what that difference is and how important having an audience is to your delivery. Um, so when you're thinking about doing your recordings and you're thinking about making that connection with students, um, how are you gonna get that connection with the audience? Maybe um, instead of having a video camera to look at, you do a cutout of like somebody or you put a picture of somebody that you can talk to over there. I know that programmers have a little rubber duck that they talk to because otherwise they'll go crazy just drinking Mountain Dew. Um, but Who's your audience? Who are you talking to? If I'm talking to a monitor, if I'm talking to a video camera, I'm gonna get terrible results. So whenever I do my tutorials, and you may have seen a tutorial or two of mine, um, I'm always talking to you. I always care about my audience. I always care about who you are, but it's taken me a long time to get to that point where I can envision all of you and I can envision all the people that I'm helping um, with my tutorials. And I don't care if I mess up. If I mess up, I know either it'll stay in my video because it makes me real, or it'll, it'll be out of my video because I know some editing tricks that we're going to learn in episode three of this. So it's 8.06. I've kept you too long. Um, hopefully, everyone will join me for the next one when we talk about bringing all of the tricks that we have. Um, we're going to learn about um, having a teleprompter. We're going to learn about having a green screen. I'm going to send you a video on how to make your own green screen really cheap uh, and really easy. If you go to Joanne Fabric and you get this ugly green stuff. Um, and we're going to talk about a lot of other cool stuff. How are you going to get maybe a, a better microphone? Maybe you're going to get better camera position. Um, maybe you'll get better lighting. I have a ring light over here so that my face is illuminated a little bit better. And we're going to have fun. And the idea is not to make it perfect. The idea is to make it better than what you've get, gotten so far. That's always the idea. Anyway, it's been really wonderful Thank you. talking to everyone. And I'm really looking Thank forward to, to talking to That's everyone right. next time. Okay. Thank All right, you. everyone. Thank have you. a great Thank evening. You. Have a good night. Good night, everyone. Bye, everybody. Thank you.